Hot picks, though, from Mike Philbrick. Um, Mike, I should start by saying none of these three, you don't actually own them in the funds that are the money that you manage right now. We don't, but we own futures that represent the holdings underlying some of those that are similar. So it's it's not that we own them, but um, again, we don't uh, particularly own individual ETFs in portfolios. It's more futures based. Okay, your first idea: the Horizons U.S. seven to ten year Treasury bond ETF (HTB). Is this kind of a mid year, a uh, mid term, mid duration type idea? <laughs> Yeah, seven to ten year bonds, and and we have to realize the last de decade has been characterized by benign inflation, abundant liquidity, and sustained global growth. And mm -hmm. I thought the lead in that John did was spectacular. It is not that environment anymore. Traditional portfolios have done wonderfully. That sixty forty ubiquitous developed market stock bond portfolio has done wonderfully, but that regime has changed. We are now in one of poor global growth, accompanied by large swings in inflation and tightening financial conditions. This means that there's likely a growth shock coming, a recession's coming down the track, and we, it's going to be about return of our capital, not return on our capital anymore. Mm -hmm. The game has changed. So the seven to 10 year treasury bond ETF provides that. You've got the safety of US treasuries and you've got the safety of US dollars. I would own this in US dollars as well because I want that extra boost that comes when stock markets go into a period of risk off and sell off, bonds tend to experience that flight to quality, as does the U.S. dollar. So high quality sovereign bonds and U.S. dollars can help offset some of the losses that can creep into that equity sleeve in the portfolio. And I don't think we're done with those equity losses yet. Oh, OK. Um, your next idea is the BMO short term U.S. tips ETF. And just remind us, what does this one do? Now, this is a really interesting ETF. So this is those treasury inflation linked bonds. So again, those real return bonds. In this case, what BMO's done is they've gone and with a zero to five year uh, term in the note. So the duration is very, very small. Unlike that XRB we talked about from six months ago where they were sort of on average 15 to 20 year bonds, this is going to take that rising inflation rate issue out of the equation, but also allow the rate of return on these bonds to increase as inflation increases. Again, we are in a new environment of inflation and inflation volatility. If the audience wants to dig deeper on what that means and why that's so different, just Google resolve inflation volatility and you can listen to my partners and I dig deep into this topic. But this is a very real issue. We have inflation, we have poor global growth potentially and tightening financial conditions. So we have to have assets that do okay in those periods. Okay, and then your final idea, the iShares MSCI minimum volume Canada ETF. Uh, what is that? What? Oh, minimum volatility, of course. Sorry. Yeah. I was minimum wondering, volatility. minimum volume. Um, thanks. Why do you like this one? Well, it continues to play on the idea that we are in a, a position of playing defense. The offense is not on the field. We don't have all this abundant liquidity sloshing or sloshing around the system and central banks uh, putting a ton of money into the system to liquefy that. So we want to play defense. So what does that mean? Well, in a minimum volatility calculation, what you do is you look at all the securities available in an index and you construct the portfolio that creates the lowest amount of volatility. When you do that, it helps investors weather the ups and downs of markets and stay invested, get those dividends and not panic out. And it doesn't make them have to figure out whether they're going to be in the utility area or the energy area or in banks. It actually does a mathematical calculation, taking securities from each one of those sectors and constructing the lowest volatility portfolio. Historically, what that does mm -hmm. is you lose a lot less in market declines. And if you look at XMV versus the TSX, I think it's a pretty good example of that right now is that, um, you know, we have far lower drawdowns in the XMV 
than we do in the, the TSX, for example. So I think it's a uh, year to date, let's say. Mm-hmm. Uh, the TSX is down, the TSX 60 is down eight and the iShares MSCI minimum volatility Canada ETF is down four. That's 400 basis points of outperformance Mm -hmm. year to date. That is a tremendous amount of savings. And someone who's down 4% can kind of shrug their shoulders and say, meh, time to get back to work. You Mm -hmm. know, retirement, okay. Whereas if you've been in tech stocks and things like that, you're having to rethink that a little bit more. And this just does it for you. So it's a way to, again, eschew risk at a time when we should be very risk conscious. 